All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to the February 18th Tinderbox session. Um, we've got a ton to cover today, so we're just going to jump right in. Um, typical format for those who have not been here before is we go around the table and introduce uh, uh, each other, um, especially those that are new. Uh, we then have people raise questions that they have uh, been working on when the context of Tinderbox projects are working on, share examples, ask questions. Um, at this phase, uh, what we then do is we do agenda setting, which what we're going to do right now. Uh, and then once we've done our agenda setting, we move on to our discussion. Um, so based on our commit, our, our suggested topics uh, for this week, um, we have one linking in Tinderbox is one agenda setting. Um, I actually have my own problem or uh, issue I'm addressing, which is, um, you know, pulling images up into a Tinderbox slide template template. Uh, and, uh, and, but I'll leave that to the end because it's super gnarly and I don't necessarily want to scare everybody with the crazy stuff I'm doing. Um, uh, it looks like Mark Anderson has a, um, uh, misheard gender setting. What, 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 uh, agenda setting. Yes. Yeah, so we're not setting. Not, <laughs> so, right, we're, do we have to put our pronouns up? Huh? It's just so, just so in our new woke society, society, we're not setting genders We're we are agenda setting. Um, uh, Mr. Anderson has a map demo. You want to give a name to that? Uh, no, but I can show it very quickly or circle yeah, around. Like, what, would you call the concept? what would you call the concept? Oh, uh, well, well it, hmm, it, it, it's a sort of basically a dynamic map changer. Okay. Um, dynamic map changer. That's good. Um, what, while we're at it too, if we have time, I'd love to demo, uh, your, uh, pull text from a file. I've got that set up, so I'll be able to demo that. So that's another thing we could show that's something you've done on the forum. Um, so what else? Uh, who else? So for the others that are on this call, what do you have uh, and what, what would you like to discuss today? I'm going to pull up our forum post too. I think there were other agenda items there. Uh, what else did I have on the agenda from the forum, from the meetup post? Anybody know? Uh, while I'm looking for this, anybody have any uh, other agenda items that they want to discuss? I have one like random question. I don't know if it's you know even worthy of uh, picking up. That um, so say say I have a note uh, that's I'm trying to transport to uh, project B. Um, so according to what I understand from ATB Ref etc., um, the intrinsic attributes of that note will not transfer over. But there are, of course, a bunch of system attributes which will, and then your user attributes. Um, and is there a, any possibility of, uh, or should I, how should I think about this bit, ra rather, is to create an action code that I can uh, parse through all the populated attributes and dump that content somewhere, pipe it to, you know, a new no the text of a new note or. Yeah, no, that that's actually a really good. We should talk about that because it does raise some concerns. You know, if if it's easy enough, if the attributes that you're bringing over are displayed, so then you can see that the new note that you're bringing over has attributes that are not there. But if those attributes are not displayed, then you essentially lose those values and never yeah. know until you try to discover them. So, uh, do, do you, do, hold on, just be, the only thing that displaying an attribute does is display the attribute. It, it no, doesn't I, I, have any effect think, on value. No, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. So let me let, let me turn on the screen. Let's jump into Art's example. Sure. It's sure. a good one. And then we move some stuff around and then we can talk about it. I don't know if we can have a solution. I know I, uh, one comment is Mr. Bernstein is working on some ideas of helping us move stuff and functions between notes. Yeah. But here's the, let me just do a quick little mock-up demo show the issue and so we go like this turn it i gotta create a new tinderbox file just gonna go to tinderbox go to new your screen is blank by uh, then i know I, I know i'm just gotta create a new file um yeah, okay, okay. So, so okay here's a new tinderbox file right and so let's say i've got a file here and we'll call it note one right and let's say that note one has user generated attribute called term which we'll create and we'll make it a set. And then let's say it also has an attribute called URL, okay, which is a system attribute. 
Now we're going to create another tinderbox file. Not new window. New new tinderbox file. And by the way, are we recording? Did I hit record? Yes, you did. Are we sure? Yes. Um, yes, we are. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Because uh, I would hate to like lose everything we're about to do. All right. So if I go like this, so what you're basically Art's asking for is let's say I've got this and we'll say hello, goodbye. As notes that are in this term attribute, we've got another one. And let's create another one. We're going to call it um, uh, theme. Uh -huh. And we're going to say this one is now going to be, um, and the theme is we're going to call this one a greeting. Okay. And then for the sake of our argument, I'm now going to not have that be displayed. So here's the issue, right? And 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 Mark and, and Art, please correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm if I'm doing this issue injustice on what you're trying to do is, but the issue is, I want to copy this note to here. So yeah, in, exactly right. so in the process yeah, of sorry, doing that, exactly right. I I can see that the term doesn't exist in this document. So in that case, what I would do is I'd go like this. I'd create that document term. And now I've got it. And then in that regard, I would delete this and paste it back. And so then the value of the terms comes in because that attribute now exists. But what I don't know or what's not there is the attribute theme, right? So we've lost the theme values yeah, exactly. and, and I can't visually see that they're there. I don't know that they're gone. And the question is, how do we effectively manage that? The answer to this is that the simplest way to do it is to, to start from a slight different place is is well actually now now you have now you can make attributes for a stamp previously what you do is i, I or i would have done would be to uh, make a note that has a sort of superset all the things i might want to take across in the way of uh, custom fields custom attributes paste that and have a sort of like a precursor note. You put that note in and, you, and then you go through and you customize correctly all the fields you want. Now, what you could do is you could have a stamp that would that you set up that basically creates the correctly customized user attributes for all the things you want. Then when you paste, when you paste your note in, everything travels across. But you, you're correct that if you, if you paste a note that doesn't have... Um, information for which the field is not defined the data doesn't travel the reason the reason the attribute name turns up in displayed attributes is displayed attributes is basically showing you the values of it, it's taking the strings in a set attribute called displayed attributes and laying them out as a rows of the list so right. there's one called theme it doesn't have an attribute for it which is why it shows up as grayed out because Tinderbox doesn't know what to do with the non-existent field. And the data isn't there because the field doesn't exist. And it's just lost in the transfer because when it arrives and is put in. So I think to, to circle back around, the, 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 the answer now, certainly in sort of 9.5.1 as we stand, is I would make a, a, a stamp that sets up all your customized, basically your user attributes that you wish to copy. You run that stamp on the target uh, document uh and then you paste your notes and then there's then it's all it's all ready to go uh, yeah, that that that's conceptually okay but let me let me kind of throw some edge cases on that right so in my in my model like one of my larger files has over 500 user generated attributes mm -hmm. and so i have no idea and i'm not exaggerating when i say 500 it literally has that many um so i don't know in that particular note, I don't want, I don't have a note that has 500 displayed attributes on it. Right? Okay. Well, here's another, here's a, here's a halfway house. What you do is you, you pick an exemplar note in your uh, document that has the fields you do want. Uh, you could probably then run a function that which will, will create the stamp code necessary to use in the other thing to say, add the 25 user right. attributes that you no, want. No, so no, it's, no, it's no, the I, same, I, it's the same model. This is a bit more mise en place at the beginning end. No, I, I, but I, here's where I want to ch challenge a little bit on the logic is in, to this context, I don't know what attribute I want because in this context, I may have forgotten that I had an attribute called theme. I'm not visually seeing the attribute called theme. And I don't, I may not know that that attribute called theme in this particular note. And let's just do that here if we were. No, no, you're, you're, no, no. Uh, we're okay. at cross purposes. What I'm saying is 
you're starting, as I said at the beginning, it's like the West Country direction. So you don't want to start from here. You want to start from over there. And where you start from is saying, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note that I know has all the attributes that I'm interested in. So stop looking at the note you want to move. Look at a effectively a new note or a copy of that note and make that note have the the list because at some point you need to surface that the, 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 but, 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 you know, no, can't guess that for you but but here's my point i can't remember in this context i don't remember if i want theme or not right well that, I, I, that's I, presuming it, that how would the computer guess if you can't remember it wouldn't so here's the here's where i want the argument is but i don't want to lose data so the question would be is there a method that could say within this note give me every attribute that has a value so that way at least when i'm bringing this note over i know i'm not losing data or value you know val attributes that you know the attributes that have values in them for that particular note there isn't what you'd have to do um but you could write a function that basically would loop through all your 500 uh user attributes mm -hmm. and build a list of all the um, attributes that have a value set for it. Uh, so it's, it's another it's another precursor thing because what we're trying to end around is the fact that you know I don't know and you can't tell me sort of things. You know the, the 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 program doesn't know because I can't tell it and I can't remember in order to tell it. So what we can do is to, to take your last point is what we can do is is uh, we can go through. And first of all, we need to know all the possible attributes because we've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then for that attribute, we could we can ask, uh, does this note or perhaps does any note have a value for this attribute? Mm -hmm. And when you get to the end, you will have a list for the scope that you've chosen of the attributes that you need to then um, make a precursor from. And given that you've done that, you now have a list that lets you make another script that right. feeds neatly into the method I've already done. And that makes life a lot easier. Correct. Right. So, yeah, so we're, I think we're zeroing in on cool. like all of the edge cases of this dialogue. Yeah. Um, let's have Art. So, if I might, yeah, I want, if I might interject this. Uh, so, um, now if I'm actually concerned about user attributes, I have a very um, simplistic, because that's how my brain works, way of dealing with that. I, I would just create a note and I may call it, say, transport a note. And I would open up a uh, command option um, I and get the, the the window open and in display the attributes. I just go and click through all the user attributes until I see all my user attributes. I, and I don't have 500. Like Michael, like 500 is close to like you need to do community service levels of uh, user attributes. The most I'm at is like 30 attributes. So it's easy for me to see them on the screen and then to just dub in temporary values and then copy and paste that node into my new project, then set up my 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 user attributes, delete, and then copy over my actual node. So that really isn't my concern. My concern is more if I take a note that has some um, built in, like my number, my string, whatever, you know, the color, I want these attributes and I want them, uh, even the prototype, I want them over in the next in the next project, I just need to know why I transferred this particular node from project A to project B. I just want to know what are the attributes that, that I that I sort of you know triggered and that I've activated. Um, that's all I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't think I understood that last statement. I, I think I did. And a version of what I just said before would work. So effectively, you want to know in this note I transferred, what had a non-default value? If I if I understand you correctly, yes, correct. Right. Okay. Well, in which case, completely right. You, you I mean, well, you might have to cycle through four hundred odd uh, attributes because you don't know which ones you did. So the only way is to go through them all. But effectively, you can write a script, right? Cycle cycle through uh, everything. You you might possibly have to generate a list of all the attributes. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. you, you can you can ask Tinderbox in action code for all the user defined ones. You can't ask it. You you'd you 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 could easily get it out of ATB ref. So we could hack together the list for you of, of all the of the, all the system totally. attributes. Totally. Yeah, and then you just loop. Yeah, yeah, I mean, totally got just it. loop through that, uh, and it's and basically <laughs> okay. there are operators in there that would answer the question for you, and you would end up with a list of maybe 30, 40 attributes um, that you would then wish to know that had a. Uh, 
or not default value. Um, you could either keep that value or a bad, no a value. Value. perfect. Right. So is that an action? Yeah. Item? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, so basically what you're saying is long hand. The, the only solution is a long hand solution. It's there's there's no like quick shortcut to this. Um, no, because you're asking the you basically understandably you're asking the 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 application to guess the answer to a question you didn't ask it. I mean, you imagine you imagine what the question is, but it does it, it. You know, if you, if you if you try and look at it from the program's perspective, uh, it doesn't know because you haven't asked it. I mean, this is this problem about working backwards from what we see on screen. It's obvious to us that something's missing. Well, we know the answer. We're fuming because it's missing. We know, we know, but, we know but, the answer is forty-two, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. Here, no, no, I'm all okay. I'm only asking this, and I'm not asking for anything. You know, like I'm not asking for the the software to mimic the requirements of uh, of the user. I'm just we just had our discussion this morning. So, but but um, no, all I'm thinking is that there's perhaps some way to sort of rapidly parse through all attributes and then just pull extract the ones that have value you and and paste that knowledge somewhere i think that's called a feature maybe to this point field another attribute another user. i okay so that, that's where we are okay but i'll do it the long hand way until then because all i have to do is set it up one time and then i'm set i can use that same note uh, across all my projects well, Thanks so much. but art the reason the reason why I, I i jumped on this so quickly was i actually do experience that all the time with my projects and I'm really glad you raised it because it it articulated a problem I've been personally having, but I don't have the 30 attribute issue. I have the 500 attribute issue, and I'd love to solve this. So I think we <laughs> I think we articulated yeah. great feature request for Mark. And in the meantime, maybe Mr. Anderson and I can brainstorm how to create that function to cycle through because that would also help Mark build the build the yeah. okay. we actually did it. Um. So okay, gotcha. awesome question. Thank you for that. Um. Steve and Mr. Gale had a comment. You're on mute, Steve. If you're there. Yeah, sorry. Just getting myself off mute. Um, it, it doesn't help Art <laughs> or you, Michael. Um, but <clears throat> just a, a sort of a question, sort of appreciation. It's all very well to copy a note from one tinderbox file to another but um there's certain a lot of limitations in part uh because when you do that you're really creating a new note in the destination file with its own id so anything that is a, a part of your model there that is an interrelationship between notes is going to be a problem. You can't easily copy that from one place to another, is my understanding. You copy a note from one to the other, it gets a new sort of unique ID, um, not the old ID. So any references to that note um, that you might want to move from one uh, document to another would be very tr troublesome. So. Yes, you can do the simple thing, copy a note from one to the other, but it, it, whenever you get beyond that, it would seem that that sort of a, can't go there from, from well, here. I don't know, yeah, maybe yeah. other people's experience is different. Well, I, no, no, no. If I might jump in on, if I, if I might jump in on this. So I, I think that, that sort of what Michael and I are both uh, suggesting from our own individual perspectives, we're both sort of coming to this, in our own unique manner, is is a, a, a approaching Tinderbox as um, a file, the super giant container that contains all notes across all projects. Move so there are intrinsic values like the UUID or the X pause Y pause. It really doesn't matter to me. I just want to be able to. So let's imagine it like it's an airline, and the airline has all these bags that they have to transport from one place to the other. And there's a hub city, but there's other outflung cities and, and, and the passenger and the plane and the bag, uh, the luggage have to go in a coordinated manner from destination A to destination B. So essentially what, what I am trying to do is move uh, sometimes, you know, bundles of notes from one project to another project. 
and I want to retain, you know, the user attributes are certainly, but I also want to perhaps know which of my uh, um, uh, built-in attributes I, I need to take along with me. And um, and I need to know why I'm transporting those particular nodes. Right, and, and the nodes the, and, that I'm and, transferring between projects. My, once my nodes are in a project, I'm totally cool with what's happening, but taking it from one to the other, I also want to know, that's all. Well, the one thing you raised, which you kind of skipped over really quickly too, though, is you noted, well, I'd also like to know which prototype I need to bring over. And then when you ask that question, then you say, I also want to know which functions I may need to bring over. I also may need to know, and then the other thing to Steve's point, if you have action code running in those notes or edicts running in those notes and you copy that over, that action code will want to trigger itself. You know, and so there, there are there are a lot of considerations to think of when you bring a note over from one file to another uh, beyond just thinking about the values of uh, within those attributes. Um, but you know, it's, it's Very definitely good a topic we need, we, we need to be talking about. Um, and then, uh, and, and, and Mr. Anderson, before I forget uh, in backstage, take a look at the latest post I just did because the new ba uh, backstage release uh, uh, with the way action action code gets triggered actually has an unintended consequence now that I think about it. So um, I, I just want to remind you of it because it, it, it can, can create an issue. All right, so that's a great one, Art. And um, I definitely will be circling back on it because it's a personal problem that I have that I want to solve. Um, so we'll let you know when I think about it more. Uh, Mr. Gale. Um, this is a Tinderbox 0.99 question. I'm not quite up to Tinderbox 101. Um, so if I want to, um, as part of stamps, uh, I'm, I can change the border color. I can apply a stamp. I, that's fine. If I want to change the width of a border, I, I don't see where to do that. I know that it's possible. I'm just not finding it. Can someone describe how to do that? Change the width of a border. Mr. Anderson. Yeah, as opposed to a thin happened. border, I just want it a little bit thicker, you know. Uh, yes, I'm about to paste a, it's border, it's yeah. actually in border, if you, uh, the default, the default, it's at the border, it, although it sounds like a, a, a boolean, is in fact uh, a number setting, which is the width of the border, the default is two, um, I'll just paste in, okay. uh, the link I've just pasted uh, sort of will explain, so basically, uh, it's slightly confusing because in the inspector, if memory serves, when you go to the appearance inspector for border, uh, you see a drop down that says some or a pop up it list that says something like thin, thick, or whatever. Yeah, there you go. What We're under the hood, uh, and also if you go to well, I'll, I'll put a link in a in a second. Um, in ATBRF, it tells you what the the numbers that those uh, pop up values mean. But if you if you don't if the three um, sort of built in offerings in the inspector don't work for you. Uh, it's just a number under the hood and you can go in using your cho chosen method of interaction, um, quick stamp, get info, displayed attributes, whatever. Uh, by changing the value of uh, the border attribute, uh, you can get a different uh, border. So Bruce, are you using that? Helpful? Yeah, so, yeah and that's really helpful. Stamp, changing this to 10. And then if I were to do that in a stamp, I would say border, equals 20 and if i hit like that there's the border of 20 if i make it border back to one there's border of one and if i want to add the color uh, as part of the stamp then it's just border color yeah is there a border oh, color? color yep yeah, border bevel oh there's a border bevel too which is interesting let's play with this so the border <laughs> color is red color. okay right so yep. let's do that and we'll make it a border of 10. Ooh, this is fun. Okay. And then let's see what this other stuff does. Border bevel is memo with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Exactly. What is a bevel? What are the bevel options? Anybody know? Tell you know, I'm too funny, Michael. <laughs> Try a number. Uh it's uh if it's yeah. raised, basically you get up um it makes it like a bit like a a, 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 a raised middle part so uh, you'll see shading if there, there you go. go and and it's what are the what are the options for beveling uh yeah, good question well asked i'm just trying to see if i can find those what does um, border bash me maybe is are it happy raised, chamfered yes. <laughs> 
Hey, True's not You're a... blaming me? Yes. <laughs> you, you, you've unleashed the Kraken. Uh, this is, this, well, this we knew it was bound to happen. Looks like border dash is also a number. So if we make that like three, let's see what happens. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, I mean, this basically, uh, by this means, you can turn your, your nice, elegant map into a sort of jumbled printing set, you know, which is why why we learn to send things off to a competent printer, because it you can you can make it absolutely sort of eye searingly awful. But there's a there's a there's a range of, of stuff there. Um, a, a point I would note uh, with borders is if you want to do uh, sort of uh, sort of try all the features out at once, you probably want to have a slightly thicker border. Otherwise, you just won't see the effect. But yeah, what can be all, quite yeah. useful is um, just a simple solid border or a dashed border or a dotted border uh, can give you another axis of um, sort of report as visual report, as it were. So, you, you know, you, you, your eye can quite pick, quickly pick out that on your map, you might have, you know, six items have a dashed border. And if you know why you set them to dashed, um, then you've got a very neat sort of quick visual tailback for, for not much effort. Well, that's actually where this came from. Um, I'm working through a very involved five-year reapplication for continuing education units. So I have all of these areas and I was just trying to kind of keep track of, I mean, yes, I can use an attribute for done versus not done, but then I can kind of only see them one at a time. I wanted a visual way of seeing it on the map. And that was where this came from. Yeah. And then if we made it green, we can make Super it green. Super intent so recommendation to save these as prototypes. All right. Well, while while we're at it, so let's 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 so let's let's play with this a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna add a item called checked, right? And so if I were to do here and I say if um checked equals uh true then um uh border equals green else uh and then copy this so you could do that so go yeah like that. nice let me just grab that yeah i'll, I'll put it in the chat too Thanks. I think the, the one observation I make with this is is most of the although there are lots of these settings, um, it's a good idea to sort of plan a little ahead. The temptation is, oh, all right, I'll, I'll put this in the border and then I'll put this other thing in the border color. Um, and whilst that's doable, your eyes may not thank you. So, in other words, if you if you're going to use some of these these things as subtle highlights. I sort of I do a conceptual loop ahead. So okay, how many things do I think I want to have hints for? Um, and if there are sort of too many, say so, okay, well let 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 let's choose the ones I really want and I'll put those at the top of the list, and maybe have two or three things, and maybe choose something else. Don't forget, you've got things like note flags. Um, I don't know if people have discovered those. I'll put a link to it in just a second, um, which is another okay. way um, uh, you can link there um you, where in the map you can show up to i think five different flags um and there are patterns so if you think about you know if, if you're the sort of person who does visual abstraction well you can probably pack a boatload of data um onto your onto your notes um so that in, in other words you could you can just parse them visually rather than have to dive into uh the actual text and, and um, not to, not to disclose the fun, but Mr. Bernstein in the backstage has added some new capabilities to flags. Um, so we'll kind of we'll eke out a little a little bit in the next public release. You're going to be able to add flags and a bunch of other um, uh, actions to flags in both outline view and map view, which will help. So, so well, specifically, what you'll be able to do is to put a progress bar, so you can use bar or v bar pattern. So if you write bar open brackets, 50, close brackets, you'll get a 50% progress bar. Um, part of the reason for that is that in outline view, you'll now be able to use the first, if you've got more than one flag, the first one, and if one flag, you know, just that flag, um, will show where we used to have the so-called outline color swatch, uh, which is 
um, inconveniently where the little link widget is. So when you've got a note, when you've got a note selected, you'll see a little arrow that you can pull on to create a link. Um, but when it's not selected, uh, it's a thing people haven't used for a long time. But you could, you can have a little swatch of color. And one of the things you could do is have a um, a pattern in there, and, and people used to put progress bars in it. So that's come around. It's been readopted by Flag, so you can do the same thing uh, if mm -hmm. you like to do that. And that that will be with a suit. question. Yeah. Yep. What is the difference between a flag and an adornment? Oh, so an adornment is this. So an adornment is kind of a map view affordance for doing stuff in the map view. A flag uh, is this. So let's go ahead and turn on flag and flags. Oops, sorry. And flags is just another visual. So if you have flags running and we say red, for example, I've now added a red flag to the top of the note. So you could actually, for your purposes, Bruce, you could actually have a, if you're in map view, that could be red or green or some gradation. There are a whole bunch of different types of flags that could be doing. Now, what we're saying is in outline view, you see, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in backstage right now. So in the, in the future public release, I just disclosed something I probably shouldn't have. The future public release, you'll actually be able to show flags in outline view too. Oh, that's, um, that's, coming. Cool. That, that, that's not in the public release right now but it's coming yeah bruce if you check out the uh, link i think i put in for yeah note flags it's about two up from bottom at the moment you'll see there's um there are lots of patterns that you can play with yeah I and again on it. if you're if your eyes if you if you if you're sort of if you're aware of working copes with that actually that you with between five flags and uh, a number of colors and a number of patterns you can probably pack a, a ton of information in there and and again this idea that you know this visual making its way into outline is going to be incredibly useful for that because you can easily then see red green for like done not done kind of stuff and uh, and, uh, and and partially complete uh, and things like that but well uh, i don't want to you that, it's this. not public released yet Sorry, Eric. Okay, but I'm just going to ask one question: Is that it, presumably that you can address that that variable programmatically? Yes, so you can actually have action code to say if you know seven out of ten items in my checkbox are checked. Correct. Then increment the um, okay, Correct. perfect, and, beautiful. And what it will do is it will actually show a progress bar. So the progress bar will show this seventy five percent complete, and it will be yeah, dark, yeah, yeah. You know, like seventy five percent of it's dark and thirty percent of it's gray, uh, light gray. So you can actually visually perfect. see perfect. the progress. You gotta love this. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna yeah, but let's not go down that because it's not public yet. So it's it's definitely coming. We just don't know when. Cheers. Okay. So um Bruce, you good? Yes. Thank you very much, both of you. Okay. Uh all right. So um any other new things to the agenda? Otherwise, we can drop into the what we talked about was um making meaning with links, constructing agents and queries. Copying over stuff was what we had originally. And actually, it's funny, Art. I looked at our public agenda about copying over, um, and it actually said we wanted to talk about copying over stuff today. So you actually kicked us off with un un unawares that that was actually on what we had hoped to talk about today. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, so if there isn't Thanks. anything else, we can go to the other topic of making meaning with links. If, if, if we don't have anything else we want to discuss. You, should I quickly show this very quick demo and then it, yes, I, I, and then it's out of the way because it'll take yes, literally two seconds. Yes, please. Um, so uh, there, there was a there's a thread in the um, just started in in the main forum called multiple map arrangements of the same set of notes and there's a uh, the classic thing a new a, a, a new user unencumbered by knowledge of how Tinderbox works saying well why doesn't it just do X. And and they make they, they make a perfectly reasonable assumption. Say what I want to do. So I've made this map. What I'd like to do now is have another version of this map. Um, so how hard can that be? Well, as it happens in the way a map's constructed, it is hard because what you see on the map. And in fact, should I share screen? Uh, I love your quote, by the way. Unencumbered with knowledge. Very good. <laughs> well, it it happens to us all. Uh, um, so. So I've made it. Yeah, so can you see a map with sort of three little items on it? Yep. Yes. By, by, by the way, before you move on, that yep. progress bar you're seeing there, Art, that's what you're going to be able to do in flags too. Yeah, yeah, I saw that in a, in an instant. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. Um. So, um, 
so the, the basic idea is um so i've made this thing but actually what i really want is that you know i i, I want the I want the notes to be a different shape or I need a different color or something. And the problem is that the, the, you know, the color here is, this is, you know, color, accent color, um, and, and all sorts of things. But I, but what I did figure out is that if I, if I make another copy of say color, so I've color A and color B and, you know, for things I want to change now, I can make a stamp, Sorry, if I look better, if I'd done it for the whole, uh, 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 or I can change back to map A. Now, there's a lot of there, are, you know, a lot of moving parts. If I was going to do this, uh, if I thought I was doing this a lot, probably what I would do is instead of making color A, color B, etc., I would probably make a for each attribute like color that I wanted to have uh, different versions for different versions for. I'd make a list attribute. And then for map map version one, list item one will be the color. List item two would be the color for color. You know, map B. List item three would, would be um, be that. So it's doable. It's 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 manual work. But I mean, I, I figure for those who really really want it, it's it's doable now. But but I just think I just think that this is uh, you know actually uh, quite neat that you can do this. I, I I'm sorry, there's a bit of an eyesore saw the map. I, I really was just. Um, experimenting at the time to see sort of you know the, the the changes occurred to show you the missing parts of it well how this is happening um the the bit that's that so that's the stamp so i'm just telling it i'm giving it the list i'm i'm, I'm passing a function the list of the attributes for which i want a a, a new value uh and i'm telling them effectively which uh which map I want. Now, in this case, I've just called them A and B. So the, the A doesn't mean anything except to me who created it. In the map switcher function, it's really quite simple. Um, I'm getting the the identity, the name of the map that I want as a string. I'm getting the list of the attributes that I need to change. And the other thing I need is the ID number, because by the time it gets into a function, it needs to know which note it's, it's affecting. And then... Um, this is something I had to remind myself how to do. So because I want to build a reference to an attribute on the fly out of bits, um, we wrap the whole thing in an action. And you can see here, I was actually uh, I was actually just logging it out to text to start with. So basically, I'm saying um, make a reference to the current list item for ID as given and set it to effectively the same attributes, but for um, whichever the version string i map a or map b so what you get is sort of uh you, effectively you'll get a dollar color one two three four five six seven eight nine equals dollar color a brackets one two three four five six seven eight nine and and then it just and then this whole bit is a loop and whether it's uh five attributes or 50 it just trundles through and the net result is you get a dynamic change like that Neat. So I thought it was possible. It turns out it is. Sure. Whether it's worth anyone's time to do it, I don't know. So uh, can... amazing because there's so many parallels here between transporting notes and all the stuff we've been talking about, and what this whole set of new features affords us. Yeah. And can you do it again, though, Mark? Real quick, now that we get the output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so start over. Well, you, you're doing you're doing a command a so you're selecting all oh sorry yeah i do pose um and there are all sorts of other things i mean you know i was thinking about okay well do i use an agent and and, uh, and it, it's a matter of just you know i'm going slowly so that this, this in the half hour i had before the before the, between having the idea and the and the start of the show today so i'm doing command a i'm just selecting everything because basically i i'm i want to i want to apply the same stamp to all the notes if i just do this and go oops that's a we're already in a go to b you'll notice it's only note one that changes or i could go to uh i could stamp that one to go to i this is just to show you the color change the, the, in reality what i think you'd be doing if you if you use this technique is you basically um wouldn't just be playing around with colors here it's just to it's just to confirm to me that the changes are happening what I could imagine more realistically is you might, for instance, um, you know, note two might actually move to a different position on the map. And that's just the X pos and the Y pos. 
but it all it, it it all boils down to just having um the data stored yeah, and, the, and, and, the, and I guess I guess that's the point where I'm missing. So where are you defining what note A versus note B means for each different note? Here. So what I so if you let's step back. So for instance, the color of an item on the color of note of, of note one on a map is defined by the attribute color. I see what you're saying. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. If if I if I want to have variations of it, then I need it doesn't matter really what I call it. I, I try to use a fairly what I think is a fairly logical system. But uh, if I'm going to have two versions of the um, the map, I really need to save both versions because color itself is the current map. If I just saved map B's color and changed to map B, I couldn't go map back to map A because I didn't save what the original color was. Mm -hmm. Now I know, I know in this case I actually use the default colors in in. Uh, in in sort of version a so that perhaps is a bit confusing but essentially um you need to store these states and and i did this partly to show people that if you want to do it you can do it but you you can begin to get the idea that if you if you've got say 30 attributes in play um there's a bit of setup that said as so as with so much the automation or, or the attributes are set up once you've done it it's it, it just works well and, um, it, and people it, tend it, to get and a different piece of logic here, I think, is important here is so you're kind of hard coding that this note number one, if you're if I'm applying note A, make it make it this color, uh, make it you know standard seven. If I'm going to apply map B to it, make it red. Yeah. You, you could also not necessarily hard code that where you could do it in a function that says if the note is, you know, if you had another attribute called type, for example. Now that's doing a different thing. Just to be clear, that, that what what that's not what was being asked for. No, I know. What I, I implemented I'm, here I'm, is someone I'm, said, I, "I want to have, I want to have, I want to have a one map that looks like this, and I want to, I want the same map, the same notes, but it looks different." I, um, I so that's what this does. Yeah, I understand. But what I'm suggesting, though, is let's say in a more, I'll call it more practical in my logic, is let's say I had a note called type. So in this map. I've got a type a note called tasks and I have another type note called meetings. And in note A, I wanted tasks green and meetings blue, but in note B style, I wanted those reversed. So I could actually set it up where if, you know, if, if note is type task, then apply this color. If note is type B, then apply that color. So you don't, wouldn't, you could actually do a little bit and you could expand your logic rather than having that logic hard coded in the note through attribute values. You could actually apply that logic in a function depending on the values of any of the notes attributes. Yeah, it's it's getting a bit like sort of CSS for maps, but let's Correct. not go there. Correct. Let's not go there exactly. But yeah, <laughs> well, this is way cool. Can you share the file with us so we can put uh, it on? The uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll pop it in the sidebar and I'll send it to you after. So, Mark, any other, anybody have any Mark, other questions? On that? I'm also questioning. You know. Yeah, sorry. I was just, I was just thinking. I mean, this entire process, uh, and it's super cool. And also, is there a possibility that some of these values could be uh, combined into prototypes? And so, you know, you would say if it, it if the node satisfies X conditions, pop it over to prototype, you know, um, B, which in short, yes, possesses but I, all I, I, these I, uh, characteristics. Yeah. I, so the short answer is yes. My again, my again my 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 sort of follow up to that based on experience is to not let the mind race ahead of the practicalities because it all sounds wonderful but actually you just end you, if you're not careful you end up with an awful lot of logic that you don't really understand nested away in somewhere that you can't remember where to find so yes yes you can absolutely you can do it mm -hmm. i mean one way it would be useful is is that of course what 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 you could certainly do um is if if you're using if you're using prototypes a lot in the map um which obviously i'm not using yeah. here you could for instance affect the prototype where where you want uh prototype derived values to change so absolutely um that would require a little bit more thinking because of course the prototypes aren't on the map so you're now uh you probably would you'll need some more code just to go and uh change those as well um you, you know you'd need to make sure somehow that yeah because you know go ahead 
No, please, please, please sorry, please go ahead. I, I didn't let you finish. No, 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 I, I sort of done. Oh, okay. I was just going to point out that. Uh, oh, okay. So I was just going to point out that for me, as as my notes are sort of formalizing and then, you know, finding their individual channels, um, I find it more practical to think in terms of prototypes. And I, I as I'm shaping the idea, once the idea is already shaped, once my file is a template that I can use across the board, I'm totally cool. But as I'm setting up, I go like, okay, I'm 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 shepherding these into various and so 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 prototype seems like the best catch all way to do that. And so if I were to access this type of feature where I want to, you know, a carte blanche change uh, several times my map to appear different, um, I might want to do that via manipulating the prototype. So so are so, I mean, a whole bunch so, of so, notes, so are, uh, so are, uh, let me give you an example of that. Going back to my point, let's say you had a note and it's yeah. typed as task. You could have two different prototypes, task A, task yeah. B. And you could say, if it's type as task and you apply Basically. map A, then apply ta prototype task A. If I apply map B, then apply proto prototype yeah. task B. And then a bunch of those. And then any action code or Correct. anything related. And I understand that prototype prototypes don't apply. cover all the attributes. Yeah, well, they could do, especially if it's not covered by a prototype, because there are a lot of attributes on there, Mark, that 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 will not follow to a prototype. Will not. Sort well, of, they they um, could do it. I mean, it, the, the prototype the the prototype okay. is only what you make it. So the point is, if you want if you want to uh, massively okay. visually pre change your your prototype, then whenever you change that prototype. All those values, borders, you know, shadow, all sorts of, all that can change. That uh, I mean, for sure. So that, but not that, intrinsic, that, for example. Not yeah. intrinsic, for example, which makes sense because you you really don't want to change the position of that note necessarily. Yeah, as, as an example. Well, the, the like prototype doesn't cover every attribute. Does it? No, no. So intrinsic, uh, uh, yes, yeah. intrinsic things like sort of uh, x pos y pos, the x y position on the map. Absolutely, you would need to yeah, handle yeah. in the note. But yeah. again, like all these things, uh, I think the reality will out that if you when you actually come to do this, I mean, we're talking about it. When you actually come to do it for real, uh, it will be become sort of self evident which is worth doing which way, because in the round you. You know what you don't want to do is totally find right. yourself staring at lists right. of hundreds of attributes it will drive you bonkers. Yeah, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right. Um, let me show since we're on. I'm gonna have. I'm trying to save some files here. Um, TBX borders. Um, since we're on to Mark uh, Anderson's fancy demos. Oh, Steve, you had a question. Or comment. You're on. Um, it, it feels like perhaps the elephant in the room would be uh, an agent that would create aliases of the notes that you're interested in, and then you could have them on a separate map and um, have a whole set of of related, you know, linked notes with different, you know, visual attributes that would seem depending on that it may not be the brief that mark is trying to achieve um but you can and it's sort of related to the conversations that we've had over these several weeks about these these different kinds of of um canvas type uh things but uh if the desire is i want two maps that look different but uh underneath they're uh, sort of the same notes, that might be a, a, an approach as well if you're willing to say each alias is linked to its underlying uh, real note and you're just using this to to visualize something different. Steve, Steve you're, you're right in a lot of ways conceptually, but we have to remember alias, you know, aliases of notes through agents don't take on the links of their original notes. You, yes. so you then have to have agent codes to regenerate those. Uh, aliases also create a list of notes. And because aliases in, in themselves are unique notes, they don't necessarily inherit the map view X, Y, POS of a map view that you would expect. Exactly. So then you'd have to that, regenerate all that too. So there's a lot I of- I consider that a feature, not a bug. 
No, no, it's, it's not necessarily. Depending on the brief of what you're trying to yeah, accomplish. Exactly. I'm not calling it a bug, but I'm, for the uninitiated, um, you know, I've also experienced in the forum, hey, I've generated, a, a, a run a query on these notes. Why aren't they showing up in the same position as their originals in map view? And that could get really, people get really confused for those. What did you call it? Un, un, unencumbered with knowledge people is what Mr. Anderson said earlier. Um you know, that could that could that could get people challenged if they don't uh, you know see what they expect. But you you raise some good points. Um, I just I, I just circle back on that and say that yeah, I mean the the difficult thing is and, and it is diff it, it is difficult to do before you have a sort of good working knowledge of uh, of some of the views. But the issue is to sort of think inside the constraints. And for better or worse, a design constraint here is you can only have one map of a container at a time. Because what 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 one of the things he wanted to do, I think, what he envisaged was having sort of four windows with four different maps of the same thing. That you could only do via aliases, and then you have the and then you have the contingent problem of making all the the um, links look the same, and then you probably won't be happy because some of the names will be in italics, and this will upset you visually. I mean, you can't win. But I, I'm, I've always been, I suppose, years of being a data plumber is that I'm a, I am, I am one for working inside the, the sort of starting constraints in terms of, um, you know, not immediately starting from something that's not on offer, and that, that, that and that was the genesis of the, of the small demo today. Okay, and speaking of that, let's move to another topic, and then we'll hop into our our plan for the ses today's session. Is uh, in the forum, uh, Mr. Anderson produced. Uh, this suit, I thought I put a note here. Can you pull up the URL for the, yeah, where can you pull up the, grab the URL from the forum mark on the session oh. so I can drop it here. Uh, okay. This, yeah, is yeah. Your, this is your test note. So what, uh, what Mark was playing with the other day, which I thought was wickedly cool. And I've actually adopted it for my doctoral research is let's say you had a text file out on your computer and you wanted to pull the contents of that text file into your computer. So uh, because I want to protect the innocent, uh, I'm not going to show you my, um, actually what I can do it, I can do it this way. Let me find my finder, uh, finder, 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 open up a new finder window, go to my doctoral dissertation, uh, grab this temp file here, create new folder. Test. All right, so let me demonstrate it this way then. All right, so let's say you've got a a, a test folder here, a, a, a file, and so essentially I did a bunch of YouTube interviews of, of customers um, for my research or uh, participants for my research. I then used Otter AI to transcode uh, that um, that research, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this file from here over to there. And it will drop in the uh, the path. And again, sometimes, Mark, and I still haven't figured out why, sometimes it puts the complete path, sometimes it puts the relative path. And I've yet to figure out when, 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 yeah, there's some on, on a magical stuff that's happening in, uh, in, in the Mac there. So what I want to do here, the other thing, and may, people may not be aware of this, is what, and, and because of the command line stuff, what you really need is the full path, not just the, the relative path of this tilty. If you want the full path in your Mac, if you go to view and then show, and then click on um, hide path bar or show, or show path bar under the view menu on your finder, you can see down here, I'm showing my path bar for my file. So if you right mouse click on that, and let me open this up a little bit so everyone can see it. If you right mouse click on that, and I find this just excruciatingly uh, useful when I'm especially working with images, you can copy the full path of your file. And if I do that, and now if I go to Tinderbox, it actually pastes in the full path to my file. So that's a real, this, this, you know, doing a copy on your item here is a really quick way to copy the full path of an item on your computer. Um, so you can do that. Now that I've done that, what Mark figured out to do is if we pop into his um, command line text, he started with this. And again, if you want to, since this is your magic, uh, if you want to you know, explain it to us, Mark, you can, otherwise I can. <laughs> um, 
You want to go for no, it? The one, oh, sure. So one of the things we, we looked at, um, actually stepping back because um, it goes back to this issue of uh, having a full file path. And I should explain that so Lost in the Sands of Time, so going back probably before the rewrite of the app for version six, um, the screens were smaller. So one of the reasons that they're shortening to the tilde to the you know home directory um, was because at the time you didn't get an ellipsis if the note was too, the path was too long. So people were saying, hey, it's fine to have a it's fine to have a displayed attribute that is or a key attribute in that day, which is a path. But if I can't read what's at the end of it because it's off the side of the screen. Um, so that was one reason that, you know, you don't really need that bit. The, the system can cope. What it transpired, something that um, Michael discovered, was that if using this method, um, which I sort of found uh, basically by rummaging around online, um, then uh, it, it didn't work uh, if it had a, a shortened um, URL. Okay, and, and, and actually, before, before we move on, Mark, let's explain to people what's going to happen, and then we can say how it works. Yeah. So, so, he, so essentially, what I've done is I've 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 brought my file over here. Now, if I use the clop, copy to clipboard stamp, which is just calling a function, um, watch what happens. I'm going to call the stamp and hit copy, and you're like, "Well, what happened? Nothing happened." Well, what happened was using this function, which Mark will explain to us in a minute, by pulling that command, it copied the items to uh, the clipboard. And so now if I go ahead and hit paste, there's the context of that text file. Now, one of our community members chimed in and said, well, wait a minute too. You could run that same command, which Mark will explain to us in a second. And then if you make the attribute equal to the text file of a particular destination note, and again, um, now watch what happens. If I apply the other stamp, copy text, uh, copy to text and watch what happens. I hit that. Um, oh, shoot. Why didn't it not work? Uh, uh, come on. There we well, go. Well, on a good day, it works. Yeah, it was just working before. It, what it does is it so automatically. Yeah, what it does is it automatically pastes the contents right into the note. Mm. And so if you're, you know, and that can be really effective. So if you've got a bunch of, like in my case, I've got 20 interviews, rather than having to manually co copy, paste them back and forth. I just drag up the file, hit the stamp, and the content comes right in. Yeah, and indeed, you know, the, the sort of joy is that if if you scale that by ten, you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to do you know two hundred of these. You could actually write an action code, get a list of the paths, and just just you know get the action code to walk through um, the you know say two hundred notes and go and find the appropriate bit of information and stamp it in. Well, and that's uh, actually what like, I did. like so many yeah, things. When, whether it's worth writing the code is a judgment call. Well, that's what I did for me. I actually did one. And then because I'm a geek, I actually said, well, can I do what you just said? And I had it automatically create me 20 notes and copy the text of each of the 20 notes into uh, into their text files. So I thought that was interesting for anybody that's kind of doing research. This is something cool that Mark did. And did you put the link to the chat? To find the, yeah. Uh, I think I did. Oh, I, I sent it to you in a direct message. Sorry, let me, uh, right. I'll just copy there that. And, there, and, there, and here's the thread if you guys want to learn about it, but it is really cool and it totally works. Um, there, there is, I, I might add, there's, 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 there's nothing particularly in the stamp. What, the, the run command will indicate that what we're actually doing is talking to the basically the Unix environment on, on your Mac. Um, the terms PB copy and PB paste are just... Um, a command line commands effectively to put something on the pasteboard as it was then or when they, when they wrote that uh, when they wrote that sort of bit of code uh or or to paste it from the pasteboard um and uh, uh, simplistically put for those who aren't expert in these things um the cat bit is is um in the the first example of using the pasteboard is basically um sort of creating the input to go into the the, the command that we want yeah, but those sort of things. If you need to know those sort of things, a is well, things like Stack Overflow, your friend, or or or, or ask in the forum. I I'm certainly not expert on the command line, but there are a goodly number of people who who seem to have some fairly ninja skills. So uh, between us all, we can sort it out. Uh, and I see there's a hand up. Um, can you connect the dots with a watch folder and this capability? Because it seems there seems to be some overlap and I'm not quite sure what this does that watch folder doesn't do and why would you choose this technique 
versus choosing a watch folder technique? I would say it depends whether you like or can use watch folders. I mean, in a sense, if you're using watch folders and that works, it's fine. So there's like so many of these things, there isn't a better or worse. Um, this <laughs> as ever came about because somebody asked a question. But, oh, yeah, that's probably possible. And it turns out it is. So uh, it's nothing that anyone needs to do. Um, it's the kind of thing that could be useful if you uh, just occasionally need to do this. You know, once you scrolled away the code, you don't have to go back. You you know how to do it. Um, you could, if you're used to using watch folders, you could, you know, what put that that one occasional note in a watch folder and bring it back. It's really a matter of a matter of choice, and I suspect it really boils down to what your sort of general workflow is. Does that help? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. But just. For this audience and for others who might be looking at the video and asking themselves, well, can't we use watch folder? Yeah, um, it, you could. And again, the point being, if you're running a watch folder, it's always going to be watching that folder and that's taking processing and doing that. If you're doing discrete research where it really is just you're just analyzing 20 interviews, you want to get the, it, the content for those 20 interviews into the system. And once they're in, you don't want any other background, background processing running that's why you might want to use something like this. So it's versus like an, an always watching folder or a discrete set of 20 actions that, or, or more that you want to, you want to, you want to have done. And watch folders come in as read only. You've got to do some fiddling to make them editable and, and do the, your other things to them. Correct. And so invariably, if you wanted to make them editable, you drag them out of the watch folder to create discrete notes that you then can edit. And then the watch folder will reproduce the effectively the aliases of those notes in the watch folder, which is a totally different process. Yeah. Seeing, seeing as watch folders what being mentioned. Really... Sorry, Art, would, is that you? No, I apologize. No, I, mm -hmm. I have a lag, I guess, that's what's doing this. Um, no, I was just going to point out that Eastgate has added some really cool feature to the watch folder uh, uh, um, e ecosystem where if you delete the source file from the finder, it appears within the Tinder box as a as a note with a with a line through it. Got it. So that means that indicates to you that you've made your that your source file has somehow changed or vanished or, or whatever. Yeah, nice. and I I just as I, I, seeing as we're mentioning watch folders and and for the sort of you know <laughs> for later listeners if not those here, I think it's worth is making the point because I think there's often a mispresumption that. Uh, watch folders are, are effectively some full-on sync. They really aren't. They're, they're, they are a sort of automatic, in a sense, an automatic input. It's like a, a sort of inbound uh, Dropbox, not in the sense of the app Dropbox, but more like the one on your on your Mac. You know, you can drop something into some another another user's Dropbox. Yeah, yeah goes in and you can't get it out. So it's broadly a, a one-way feature. And there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. The point is, it is what it is, and it is not all those other things. Because it, it does occasionally come up that people who are you know just discovering this say oh right and 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 assume because no one's told them otherwise that that effectively they're setting up some full on sync no it's it's an in, it's broadly an inbound process and and uh, the point is well made that if you want to actually do work on the, on the note that's created by the watch folder you probably may need to copy it elsewhere but again that's that's not you know that doesn't have to be problematic it's it's a matter of just considering how it fits within your workflow. Yep. Yeah, and you know, also it's, it's really right. important to you as an idea. I mean, if it if it's worthy of being entered into Tinderbox, if there's perhaps a push method you can use from your source app, because I might generate a, a crazy idea from in the middle of a Word document I'm working on, or in drafts, or 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 task paper, any one of these sort of feeder applications. The idea is for me to get it into Tinderbox and. To perhaps uh, stick a few attributes on it, which sort of you know will will put it in the right place. Yeah. Just taking some notes here. All right. Anybody? Dave, you, Dave had a hand up just yeah. a second ago. Yeah, that was uh, art. Basically, stole my thunder. Uh, with with the wonderful thing about the watch folders <laughs> is, <laughs> if you're working on a platform that is not. At Mac OS, uh, you can get something into uh, Tinderbox without having to make a reminder for yourself. It, when you go back to your file, it'll be there. 
Um, you know, so that that's a tremendous affordance. I think I'm going to play some more with shortcuts and um, Apple Script and everything, and and see if there's a way to actually create uh, uh, Tinderbox um, notes directly. But I don't know if you can do it from an iOS device to a Mac. That you know, is it is the Mac running right now? There, there's some questions about whether or not it would. Act, you have to be there to make it happen, but the watch folders are great because there's a big issue, too, Dave. I beg your pardon. Yeah, I'm sorry to cut in. Um, the, there's a big issue because I've been having exactly that. If you've upgraded to Venturas, particularly on the Mac OS, uh, a lot of shortcuts are broken, and they are no longer um, um, concordant with the ones that are generated on iOS. So there is something going on. Even some of my shortcuts just stopped working. You know, certainly like in, insert um, text or whatever, like simple, simple commands um, are malfunctioning right now. I'm tempted to say, you know, first they came for Apple scripts and I said nothing. <laughs> then they came for shortcuts. <laughs> then they went for automator. <laughs> then they went for automator. <laughs> yes. Hypercard, hypercard. <laughs> Open doc. I'm crying here. Okay. <laughs> So we've got about 22 minutes left in the session, and one of the uh, community members had asked about this topic of making meaning uh, through um, uh, through notes. And uh, by the way, so Mr. Renault used Alfred to create a TBOX note. Yeah. So on that note, by the way, um, you know, there's another uh, and if people that are interested in that. And, and Art and I worked on this quite a while ago. Is for example, we you know Art and I take notes in drafts. Which, by the way, if you don't use drafts, it's just a great cross-platform um, note-taking app. Uh, for, you know, it works on your Apple Watch, it works on your iPhone, it works on your Mac OS. Um, and Draft supports Apple Script. And in the forum, we have an Apple Script that you can create a note in the Drafts app, and then click an Apple script button that will then create a note in Tinderbox, right? So you can move your like, you know, what I would call them as my rough zettles and drafts or my impromptu notes and drafts, click a button. And then that push, pushes them over into Tinderbox into an inbox. And then from that inbox, I then can then refine them into my more curated and refined notes. And that's a process I think Art, we built about what, a year and a half ago or so. Um, but that's super, super helpful. Michael, a question on that, because I use drafts and love it as, as you're describing. Um, with that Apple script, then does it deposit it into the Tinderbox file you have open or does it create the, a Tinderbox file? Yeah, well, I mean, it, you could have it do whatever you want. Uh, currently, the way we wrote the script is it's whatever the Tinderbox, the latest, the, the latest Tinderbox file that's had focus. So if okay. like if you have five Tinderbox files open, the one that currently has focus will get get the inbox, or you could set up the script that will do it by name. Go add okay, it. So it. Go add it to this Tinder box with this name. So it creates inbox and then puts the draft notes um, in, underneath in, in, into inbox. Yeah. Perfect. That's really helpful. Yeah. No, it's super great. Um, I, and and maybe we can search the forum. I'll, I'll try to search the forum after the after the call and see if I can find that um, that script. But it's super useful. Thanks. Press. Four million. Okay. So, uh, any other comments, thoughts, questions before we move on to another topic? I was just wanting to make a simple point about drafts and just in terms of like maybe a, a broader discussion in terms of sort of source applications which end up feeding uh, your Tinderbox project. That drafts is one of those apps that's designed as a, you know, you generate the idea first and then. Next, you decide where it is that you want that idea to be deployed. You may want to send it as an email, or you may want it to go to Tinderbox or be a, a iMessage or whatever. Um, and Drafts is just that application. That's what it's really great at doing. Well, well and, and, and while we're at it, let me just show you in real time here. This is my Drafts app, and I'm actually taking notes for today's session in Drafts rather than, say, a Tinderbox. And then what I do, because there's a lot of chaff in here, what I'll do is I'll hit my inbox. That's going to then port over into my Tinderbox file to which then I'll curate today's session. And then that will then get converted into, um, you know, into, uh, into the, into the forum posts that, you know, you guys will get later this afternoon. So there, there's a perfect example of my 
as, as you all know, as zealotly as I am in using Tinderbox, for this kind of really on the fly, rough note taking, I actually much prefer drafts. So Michael, you actually end up in Tinderbox and then you refine it and then you export it using export template and you get it up as a post on Discord? Yeah, yeah. So let me show you what that I'll That is do. so sweet. <laughs> I right? love it. Yeah. All right. So let me- I love uh, those sweet. Yeah, let me show you what will happen just so you can see the magic of it. Uh, let me find it. Tinderbox. 101. I got to find the other Tinderbox boss. So I've got this um, about two years ago when Bruce and I started this whole- effort with tom um where we're like let's cr let's create tinderbox courses um we created i created this file called tinderbox 101 and let me find the videos here and, and this is like one of my first earliest tinderbox files i ever created so it's a total mess but the one area that i um uh maybe actually let me find meetup uh, yeah okay this is probably the better way to find it here you go so here's the note. So what I'll do is I'll import it in for, into drafts. I'll then curate what we talked about. Uh, I then have a template working in Tinderbox yeah. that basically gives me this. And then if I copy this, I can paste it right into discourse and I'm done. So, so sweet. Right? And so if you <laughs> notice in my templates, this is where that, that, that template that shows on all my posts you know, here's the level, here's the date. Here's yeah, the yeah, it looks exactly the same each time. I yeah, was like, wondering. So these are all your attribute values. That is so yeah. fucking sweet. I love it. Sorry. Yes. I so, like uh, beep and, me and, and again, okay. one, of the, I love it. One, one of the first inspirational kind of like one of the, and I can actually really almost kind of, if I went back, I could tell you the date. There was a moment I was working with Mr. Anderson. It was like three o'clock in the morning. And one of the first demos that Mark built for me was this. How to interrogate the, you know, essentially what we've done is we wrote it a template that says, here are the displayed attributes. Yeah. Pull the displayed attributes with values, iterate through that, yeah. produce that table. And then if you look at the HTML, okay. you'll see here is, here is that table that's getting mm. produced by the template because those, 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 um, I've asked it to produce that table. So that we did that one probably. You guys are feeling nostalgic looking at this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one of these days I'll get around to super cleaning it up. <laughs> but, you know, here's all of the videos that I've, you know, that we produced um, throughout that process. Yeah. But that, but that, again, yeah, and you know, you can drag this note anywhere. Yes. As long as you have the right attributes uh, in the destination right. file. Like this is, this is a permanent record of what you did, you know. What I did, when I did it. And you'll look here, you know, it's like, uh, you know, when did I record it? When do I publish it? What's it done? What's the forum post? Like I go back here and like actually get to the forum post. What version of Tinderbox were we working on when we did it? What image was associated with the video? Um, you know, what path, it, where, where, it's, where is it on my computer, et cetera? So, uh, you know, what, what keywords did we use? I mean, this is one of the... Go ahead. Sorry, sorry to cut in. I have a lag, so this is causing me to do that. But I mean, this is so this is so beautiful, and this is really one of the key things about Tenderbox that you know maybe get gets overshadowed with all the great other whiz bang features. Is this incremental formalization doesn't ever stop. Correct. You can come back six months later and go, you know what? I need this field. While I was doing, you know, forty when I was into my forty fifth video, I realized I need another field called genre, okay. for example. And oh, you can oh. set that in, and you if you have the time, you go back and adapt your Correct or or acknowledgements like he's who, who would who would help me with this demo, right? So I can yeah. realize I could Beck helped me with that demo. Mark helped me with this demo. So that's kind of and, and so that's a great example of what I'm going to do after this session is I'm going to take these notes out of drafts, pull them into this file, refine it, post it into discourse, and I'm done. And what I've started to get better at is because I now know my process better, and it's taken me a couple of years to figure this out, you'll start seeing I'm using Markdown to here's the agenda, here's the topic, here's topic number two, here are the, here are the reference notes that you guys have been dropping into the chat. And that, and so I'm getting better, at, oh, no, I'm, no. I'm better at refining that. So when I'm done, uh, it actually happens a lot faster. So hopefully that was helpful for you all. Thank you. All right.
So now let's go to uh, this. So uh, what we wanted to talk about today, we only have about 13 minutes left, so we won't be able to go in in great detail. Um, but one of our community members was asking about how do I make meaning with links? And there's a lot of different ways to make meaning with links. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, delete these here. And so let's say I had a note. Oh, and I put that in a rule. So let me stop that. Um, we'll come back to this rule in just a second. Uh, let me move this out of a rule because I don't want it there. I'm going to stick it into a stamp for now. Um, create like. All right, so let me show you an example. So let's say I've got a note, and we'll call it note one. And in that note, I've got an item called terms, and I've got elements called hello, goodbye. So there's a lot of ways, and we're just going to do this super quickly, but there's quite a few ways to create links in notes uh, and to be, um, um, uh, you know, and, and, and again, I'll share with you, we've got about three different Tinderbox videos if I show you and prepping for this document, you'll see I've got a number of um, links, uh, videos I've previously done for you guys on how to create linking. So that will be in the references that we do for this note. But let's kind of review this real quick. One of the typical ways to create links in notes is in map view. So if I'm here and I say note two, and I want to start making meaning between the relationship uh, between these notes and, and these others, you know, I can manually draw you know, a link in that regard. And I can, and remember while we're, while we're making meaning with notes, uh, links in uh, visual links in Tinderbox are, or links in Tinderbox are, are unidirectional. I'm going from one note to another note. And so in this case, I've got two links going here. If I want to um, create some uh, other kind of uh, associations with um Note links. So right now I created what we're calling two untitled links, and I have that visualization that these notes are related to each other. Maybe I, if I go up here and I type the, the name person, for example, I can say, okay, this link type is note number four, for whatever reason, for why I called it person, I don't know, is related to person three. And maybe one of the reasons why I called it that, I'm going to go ahead and help quickly add in the person prototype. Maybe we had these two people here, or, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this one uh, none. So let's say, you know, I've got person, you know, uh, because Bruce is the person I see right off the screen, Bruce Gale. So I've got the person Bruce Gale for whatever reason is linking into note three. And so visually I can see that this is a person related note. Um, so. So I can start generating meaning from the visualness of, of these note linkings. Um, other ways to create notes and uh, links in this way is if you're looking at Tinderbox, you'll see in note view and the outline view, I can quickly see there's, there's notes coming into this note and there's notes going out of this note. So that's another way to kind of visually see that there's some linkings going on the note. If you're in... Um, in, 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 you know, in, in, in anywhere, like if I'm selecting this note, Bruce Gale here, and I click command seven, which opens up the, the note, the, the linking path, I can actually visually see too what notes linking to what other note. And so if I then link Bruce up to, let's do it a different direction. Let's say I have note two coming into Bruce. And this time let's call this one an event just for fun. So we have Bruce as a person linking out to note three, but we have the event note number two linking into Bruce. So if I'm clicking on Bruce, I can now see I've got inbound and outbound links. So that so visually, so I'm what I'm trying to explain right now here is I'm making meaning with the visually with the notes and the note type links. Now uh, there are other ways to um, to be linking within Tinderbox. Uh, one way is also doing what we're going to call link text. So I'm going to drop in some Lauren Ipsum here into the Bruce note. And let's say I like th this text here. Okay, I can go ahead and highlight some text. And, add, and, and you notice by highlighting that text, it got, I got a little T here. So if I drag this T, is that the right way to do it? Yeah, so if I drag this T over to note one, 
And I can now say, let's call this one insight. Right. So I've now created an insight link. And this is what, again, we want to be, you know, as, as David Eddy said in the preamble today's meaning, names are everything and names can get really confusing. And I'm going to bring up one of Mr. Anderson's hot buttons in just a minute. Um, so if it gets a little frothy, that's, uh, that's what's going to happen. Um, you'll see what I did is I create what we're calling a text link. Now, links are links. Now, there's methods on how we create the links. So in this case, I created an in-body text link. And you'll notice here, I've got a link called insight linking to that text from this note. And so if I wanted to, so now I'm looking at note one, I can see note one is going, has an inbound link to note two. It's got an inbound insight link to Bruce Gale and it's got a note two. And if I click on that, it will jump me to the link. So the other way too, now that I just did that too, another way to make insights and manage insights when doing linking in Tinderbox is because I have these linked, and if I've opened up the link path with command seven, right? Uh, and by the way, if I say something, if you can help me, if I say something like command seven, things like that, if you can add that to the chat, that way I can pull that out and put that into our notes. Um, so, or, or any tips and tricks that you hear me say that you think are cool, I can put those into the notes. So if you look here, if I mouse over a note in the uh, in the and the and the note path view, I don't remember what this is called. Maybe Anderson, Mr. Anderson, maybe you can um, remind me what this is called. Um, I can mouse over that, and a, a, a the note pops up, and I can so look into that note that I'm linked to. And this can be incredibly valuable if you're doing some research and you've linked to a term, and you're like, but I don't really remember what the definition of that term was. Let me mouse over that linked term. I can quickly see the definition and go right back. Yeah, Art. Go ahead. Um, yeah, sorry, I was going to ask. Um, so, what exactly is the structural nature of a link? Well, behind, what exactly is it? Is it well, a lookup table between two notes, or? Well, actually, if you want to, let's do this. Actually, this will be fun to show. Um, let's go Tinderbox Meetup, DX <laughs> lesson, linking demo, and let's take a look because I don't have the exact language. And this is the other. This is, I'm going to demonstrate to another reason why I so desperately love Tinderbox uh, is, um, is this. So if I'm looking on my hard drive here, here are the note files there. If I want to go look behind the scenes, I can go ahead and open up this file in uh, an edit file. And let's go find what we mean by... Um, Note one is the one we're looking at. So we're gonna go find note one, okay? And you'll see here, so Tinderbox is just under the hood is a giant XML file. So I can see that I've got note one and where is linking happening here? Yeah, so you'll see here within the Tinderbox XML file, there is a structure called a, 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 a link block. I don't, I don't know the coding language around it. Let's call it block for the sake of having the wrong terms. And so Tinderbox says in the XML file, this section of Tinderbox where it says links, unlinks is where Mark has all links being stored. And this, XM, this line within the XML files tells me what link type I'm linking to, which notes from what direction, um, who created that link and all of this, uh, you, know, uh, you know, what type of arrow is it? What style is it? All, you know, all of those attributes for that per particular link are defined within this association within the Tinderbox file. Yeah, th th this is something. This is something that the web and all the things that come downstream from it. So basically, the wiki that underpins pretty much any desktop PKM now left behind. So this is a hypertext way of doing these. You have a link base is what is what that section is, and the links are stored outside the note, uh, and basically they're laid back um, onto. Uh, so that the link anchors, if needed, are laid back onto the text. So you can link from note to note, you can link from note to text, you can link from text to text, or you can link from text to note. Whereas if you're in a, a sort of a, a wiki, all you can do is write a web style um, link, which of course you're writing Markdown, so you don't understand you're even making a hypertext link, which is why people get so confused. I'm sorry, uh, not This is where zip links have caused so much confusion because to someone who's never used anything more than markdown before you probably may well have no you know it, it's entirely possible to start using a markdown device have no understanding of hypertext 
And so when faced with any other tool, the idea that you cr create a link using anything but square brackets can be a bit mind blowing. And, and, and so here, and here's the point too, and this is with a frothy comment that I, I, I jokingly refer to Mr. Anderson's comment. People always say is I created a zip link. No, you did not create a zip link. What you used is the zip link operation to generate a link. There is only one kind of link. It's a link that shows up in the link base. The operation that you use to create a link, there are many. As I said. Michael, a question. Yep. Um, so links are primarily used as hypertext, hypertext, if you will, to let you either view another portion of your, your map um, or to travel from one to the other. And then I know you're not showing it here, but you've also shown in the past how you can pass data from yeah, one entity to another. Well, I'm going to show that real quick before we end, because I do want to finish up with that today. So, But do I have it right in terms of these yeah. are some of the main purposes of yeah, links? Yeah. Right. So you can, visually, okay. you can visually create meaning with links. And that method of generating a link with a, a link, the, the zip link operation is I'm in here in text and I can do, you know, uh, forward, forward, and I go like this, and now I've created a link to note two from note one using that operation of zip. Link. Yeah, and I think it's worth bearing in mind that the genesis of this was somebody who's a, a a sort of hardcore touch typist who was offended at the notion of how to take the hands off the keyboard. That's how this method started, uh, and perhaps a, an infelicitous choice of using square brackets led all the, and the markdown people to, con, to assume that this was actually how the whole thing works. And it's completely the other way around. And it's worked, there's a very, very rich syntax in um, uh, the ZipLink method. And if you're a good touch typist, an accurate touch typist, it, it's, you, it's, it's all there in ATB or if you can look it up and it's, it's very powerful. You can do things like you can make a link and a link uh, and create a backlink. Uh, you can uh, type in the anchor text on the, on the fly. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want the link the, the, the anchor text in the note to link to the name of the note you're linking to, you can do that as well. So it's extremely right. powerful. And just one last thing is that, and the one thing when you make a, when you use the zip method, you are always creating a text link so yeah. that the text, the link you create is anchored in the text of that note. You can't at the moment create a uh, note, a, a what we call a basic link in Tinderbox, which is a, a, a note to do. <laughs> but watch this space because I think that may be changing too. Okay. So and again, and 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 and, and, and bear with me. We're going to run about six minutes long, but I, I do want to kind of complete this session or this this lesson plan, and we'll go from here. Now, part of the issue I have, and this is what this this was the precursor in me using the concept of of um, prefixes, and we've talked about this before. But if I'm using the uh, the the zip link operation method and I start typing note one. Well, which note one am I trying to link to? I don't know, right? And so let's say this note one is actually entity note one, and this note one is actually product note one, and this note one is actually term note one. They all could be the same name, right? So now if I'm in this note and I'm, you know, I'm in entity note one and I'm wanting to link to the term note one and product note one, I can actually see which note one I'm linking to. That, that, this was the impetus for me coming up with my prefixing strategy, because now I can distinguish between the entity note one, the product note one, and the term note one uh, within, uh, within that environment. And then I can use my short title methodologies that we've talked about in previous um, uh, um, uh, discussions uh, to then be able to have the purity of just the 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 text note one versus its prefix and we can talk about that at later uh, there's a, a useful question from uh, fidel in the sidebar that's probably pertinent to all they're saying so i got i got two notes you know cain and abel and i want to link to them and and show the fact they're brothers um the answer is that um you can uh create a link of either type you can create a text link or a a, a note to note link a basic link and probably the normal way you do this is create that link and you'd set the link type of brothers um, and that does two things and a map you'll literally see the link type as a label so you, in the most trivial sense you can literally use it as a box and line diagram you see two boxes and a label indicating what it is the real power is if you want to start computing and say oh, find me all the find me all the notes that are linked by a link of the type brothers right now, you don't have to do that but that so, so in a sense the the labeling the visual labeling is almost the trivial end of the use um, well, yeah. and, being and able to compute across it is, is the power that comes with it.
let's talk about that right now. So uh, Bruce brought up a really important point. So I've got Kane, and sorry if I spelled them wrong, but I've got Kane and Abel, and yeah, you know, and I'm I'm linking to both of them. They're they're brothers with each other, right? So now let's say um, I'm going to create an attribute called relationship. Uh, relationship. So there's two more things I want to demonstrate before we end today. And I'm going to make that a set. And I'm going to create another attribute called relationship. And so I've got attribute called relationship. So right now, for meaning making, all I have is visual meaning right now. Right. And I can only get the visual meaning when I'm actually looking at it in a map view versus when I'm in the outline view. I can't see that can enable our brothers unless I actually open up the command seven and see, OK, brother relationships and the links still all visual meaning. Right. So here is where it gets super sick, powerful. So let's go ahead here. And I'm going to say uh, pass values, right? So what I want Tinderbox to do, with, and I'm creating a stamp. All of this can be done with action code and um, input code. What I'm going to say is take the um, take the attribute uh, relationship, right? And what I want is I want. For, and in this case, because remember, links are unidirectional. So I'm going to say make links dot inbound. In, uh, sorry, links dot inbound dot brother. Uh, and we'll say name. You missed a quote on brother. I missed a quote. Yep. Okay, and I have, a, by the way, too, for those that are watching this, there is a feature request that I want to be able to pass this brother in quotes in as a value via a, 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 a function value, but you can't do that right now. So there's a long standing request for that, and we can talk about later why that's so critically important. Um, so what I'm going to do in this stamp is I'm now going to say outbound. Okay. So what I've done is I'm now telling Tinderbox, hey, when I apply this stamp or when, excuse me, let me say it a different way. When I apply this action code, either via an on add, via a stamp, via a rule, via an edict or a variety of other methods, I can now go ahead and let's go and look at, do you see where right now relationship is uh, empty? No, nothing up my sleeves. I hit apply and I now know that my, Kane's brother is able. There, or, or excuse me, the real you know, the relationship. Um, it, maybe this was a bad. Let me do this one. Um, actually, you know what? What I want to do here is you um, want a different. You actually wanted to use a if you used a, a linked to or linked from with a filter with a link type filter is probably what you if yeah, you yeah. want to get what the relationship was. Yeah, if I want to get what the relationship is, but you know, so the point being, I'm doing in this demo is you're seeing. I oh, actually um, how about well, let's, let's, and again, here's the great thing about. Tinderbox, as as, um, as um, Art had pointed up before, I created an attribute called relationship, and I realized, well, you know what? That's not the relationship I want to really have. I want to have the relationship names, right? So in this in this particular demo, not the relationship of brother versus that. I want to have relationship names, and if now if I go back to my stamp, and I change this to names name, right? And so I have the name of that relationship and I hit enter. And now if I hit reply, you'll go here. And if I go to Abel, he's empty and I hit apply that to him. So I, I can see that, okay, Kane and Abel have a relationship with each other. Now, if you were messing with your action co co code and this is a simple demo, we don't have enough time to do it now. What I could have had it actually do is give me a, a dictionary, Kane brother. Right. And so that way I now have a value king brother that I can then iterate in another way or another method of relationship. Or I could actually have it be done like this, brother king. So that way I can now know uh, I can then interrogate this note down the future and say, grab me every note that who's got a relationship of brother and who's their names of that brother. And that th so this is a way of making meaning 
even be, and not just making meaning, but operationalizing the value of your of your notes. Um, Mr. Rogers, real quick, and then I've got one more thing I want to show before we end. Well, go do your other thing because it's unrelated. But okay, so the last thing I want to show in here, and I, and, I've, and I've demonstrated this more, uh, or I've demonstrated this uh, several times, but hopefully this is now going to make more sense. Let me go up here. So you'll see here I've got a note called Note One. And in note one, I've got this idea called terms. And so let's say I'm writing and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. This is, you know, I am just a freaking genius. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. I've got this idea of the terms goodbye and hello that I want associated with this note. I want to be making meaning of this note because I want to associate the terms hello and goodbye with this particular note. And later down the road, I actually want to define what hello, goodbye mean. Um, or, uh, or, or there's any number, and you can do this with any attribute, but now look what happens with Tinderbox. I've created a, uh, another piece of action code that says create a variable called vNote. And then what I'm asking Tinderbox to do is saying, hey, Tinderbox, interrogate the terms of each item in vNote. And then what I want you to do is create, uh, populate that variable vNote for each time you iterate through this list. And I want you to, you know, in a new folder called resources folder, I want you to add that note term. And so now watch what happens. And then what, and what I want you to do is by using the create attribute, I want you to create that note. So I'm selecting in here, nothing up my sleeves. You don't see any resources folder at all here on the screen. The second I apply that note to be note, I automatically have a folder called resources folder and there are my terms. And let's say, now let's say, okay, I, well, I forgot what I really wanted to do. What I really wanted this to do is I wanted it to go into a folder called terms folder and go like that. And now if I do this, I now have a terms folder underneath the resource folder with those notes. And then I'm saying, what you know what? Because I use prefixes for my notes and I want to define them, what I actually want to do is I want to also say before I add the X, I want to add term hyphen. Okay, and now if I hit, I hit apply, I've got term hyphen goodbye, term hyphen hello. So you can actually use, and then let's take it even further. And let's say now, um, to Mark's point, link to, um, and, uh, God, what is it? Vnote, yeah, link to Vnote. Uh, Tinder, I, I think this is going to work. Tinderbox remembers the context of the note that it just created. So now if I do this, I'm going to delete these two and go to the B note, hit done. And you'll now see automatically, not only have I created that notes goodbye and hello, I've actually automatically linked to them. And so now I can go here while I'm writing and give a definition of, of goodbye, pop in here, give a definition of hello, pop in here, and then go back to the context of where I'm working. So again, you know, I'm, 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 I'm making meaning, I'm creating asset value, I'm creating insight, I'm linking and associating, I can pop into hello and goodbye. Now, let's, now that we've done that, let's go up here, let's add term to this note, and let's add hello to this one. Okay, now here's the other great thing. I've got this note called hello here, and let's give another note called, um, I, I don't know, um, food. I'm hungry. Okay, so in note one, it also has hello, but it also has a note called food. Now watch what happens. If I now pass, if I now go to create note, I hit apply. The note food gets created. The note hello does not get recreated because it already exists. And now if I look at the note two, it's linked to hello and food. And if I go look at hello, you can see it's 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 linked to entity one and note two, so you can just see this massive amounts of meaning and insight and asset creation that gets generated from this this process. Now, uh, sorry, um, uh, Art and um, Dave. Okay, um, so mine is real quick. Um, so Fidel brought up an interesting point in the chat, and then I unfortunately I booted myself out, and so I don't I cannot quote it verbatim. But he's talking in terms of like, okay, so I, I know that I have two characters, Abel and Cain, yeah. in my in my story, story bank. Um, and I will connect them by way of relationship and call them brother. Mm -hmm. And you know, my immediate response to that, like it really depends on what you want from 
the relationship between Abel and Cain. Correct. And what and what it has more to do pass with, back and forth from them. Yeah, and, and how you're going to broadly apply to that. So, for example, I mean, and, and you may have a more detailed sort of way of breaking down your characters, but you might go, well, they're not just brothers because one is a sort of a protagonist and one is an antagonist. Correct. And that's technically really what they are. And so perhaps the relationship you want and one to the other um, may be different than the relationship that you immediately see. So, so really, I just wanted to bring up the point that it behooves you know, thinking deeper about us before you apply them. See, I have a big problem with links anyway, and I would love for us to do a, a, a link uh, specific uh, sort of these days. Well, that's that's what we're. Um, I have a real hard time adopting them. That's what we we're intending to do today. But let, let me show you another example that's in real world. So next Friday, I'm traveling to Spain for the Mobile World Congress event, and I'm I'm overseeing five different sessions at the conference. And one of the one of the sessions we're doing. Hi, caramba. One of the one of the sessions we're doing is the mobile centric ecosystem. And you'll see here, I've got an abstract huh. for the conference. I've got speakers for the conference. I've got talking points and the notes that we that we all discussed as to what we're going to talk about in that particular session. Now, in this, and, and I'm pulling up images for each one of my speakers. Now, here's the thing: these guys may. <laughs> These guys, like including myself, like in this session, I'm speaking at multiple of uh, multiple sessions of this event, right? So I don't want to create multiple Michael Becker notes, but I want to create multiple speaker Michael Becker notes. So I'm creating multiple speaker Michael Becker notes, and these notes are really are are linking to every one of the Michael Becker notes are linking to the Michael Becker um, note, yeah. a one note Michael Becker. But I have multiple yeah, individual, speakers. yes, contact, I have multiple yeah. speaker Michael notes. Yeah, but watch what happens. Using the methodology that I was showing you earlier, let me pop up here and we'll go like this. I've created a speaker link function. And what that speaker link function does is it, it goes through the note and pulls values, all the inbound notes for if the Michael Becker is a speaker, what values do I wanna be pulling into his speaker note? So when I do that, and I'll show you a very practical reason why I'm doing this. When I'm doing that, I now have their picture. I now have their email address. I now have all their bios. I have their abstracts all linking to this. When I look at the particular session, then I then have a attribute called speaker emails. And now watch what happens here. If I go and apply the stamp that I created called um, speaker email, I'm saying create a variable called email, go and collect from the children of this session, if you're a prototype P speaker, grab its short title and grab its email, then populate the attribute speaker email. But then what I also want you to do is I want you to run a run command that and this, going, this circles back to what we were talking about earlier in today's session, copy the value of V email. So why am I doing that? Well, because I need to, e I need to easily email everyone within this session. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that stamp, okay? you'll now see that that got populated into speaker email. But now what I can do is check this out. This is cool. Now I can go over here to my email and just hit paste. And so now I can email every one of the oh, speakers right. in that session. Because it is your list of, of CCs. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so perfect. now, and, and again, it's formatted in the way that Mac, that my email client will look at and absorb and import those emails. So now I have got a much faster way of grabbing the emails and uh, communicating directly with every one of my uh, speakers. And I do have another action script that's not as um, robust as this, where I could actually apply a stamp and it would actually open up Mac Mail from Tinderbox and pre-populate all of that. But I don't use Mac Mail, I actually use Spark Mail and Spark Mail doesn't support that type of interaction. That's, right why, right. I, that's why I've kind of done this. Right, so that's, that's yeah, another yeah. Spark that's is interesting. Really practical example. Issues, but of, of why of, of how to leverage and create meaning with notes. Well, I mean, one last thing I want to show you is then you apply a template. And now I actually have um, the title of the talk, the abstract for the talk, list of all the speakers, are they confirmed or not? And now I can then push this into a word file and send it to people. So that- Yeah, and this is really so important, Michael, because again, we're talking about real-time integration of Tinderbox and sort of being able to, um, while you're driving, uh, you know, behind the behind the wheel of Tinderbox, as it were, 
to be able to just quickly throw out something into a mail application or into real world stuff, um, you know, into a Google Sheet and, and retain and stay within the structure and everything you do incrementally in Tinderbox will sort of generate maybe attribute results or note results, or text results, or whatever that you right. can directly apply without actually having even to go through export code, which Correct. is a whole different, you know, uh, uh, thing. Correct. Well, and the other beautiful thing too is- so these really work. The other beautiful thing is like in my teaching too. So I, I, I work with several learning management systems across the different schools I teach in. So what I do is I do this kind of work in Tinderbox, but then I can hit export, copy that HTML and paste it right into the learning management system. And the learning management system nice. support the ability to do HTML. And I can actually demonstrate that to you real quick before we leave. Um, uh, Michael, I'm going to have to drop off. Could someone record the chat? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll grab it. Okay, take care. Uh, but uh, yeah, and so again, this just kind of demonstrates the the power of everything we're doing. Um, let me just pull this up, and we can wrap up for the day. Uh, <laughs> that we're doing with the uh, with the system. So when I'm, I'm I'm looking off to the screen, what I'm doing is I'm logging into my um, learning management system real quick, um, doing the security protocol on it. All yeah, right. Okay, and hit refresh. All right, so I'm duly logged in now. I oh, it didn't take just a minute. Let me do one more. Come on, you know when you're moving quick and you make errors here. There we go. Log in. Push. Huh, that's interesting. It's not letting me in. All right, well, I'll deal with it later. Uh, for some Michael, reason- before, before we leave, I don't know if you saw it. I'm Dave Rogers' question in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. What's up, Dave? Um, uh, uh, can can have just left. I'll, I'll just read it because I think it's relevant to everyone. Dave has left. Um, can we access suggested links in export somehow? Can I create a child note of a post with the suggested links in the text? Can I create a child note with suggested links in the text? Um, uh, well, yeah, you you could, but I'm not sure you, why you'd want to because one, that could get super messy and you could just open up the, the, the link path pane to see what links that Tinderbox is suggesting you take a look at that may be related to this note. Well, maybe we, we can defer it then because yeah. he, he's not here anymore. So he may yeah, have let's a defer, reason let's defer. for why he's asking. Yeah, let's defer back to that conversation. Um, but uh, so Fidel, did this help you? Since you were the one that, the, uh, yet the second week in a row, you were the one that drove the impetus for today's agenda. Was this helpful for you? And thank you for that, by the way. That's not a derogatory statement. Um, was this helpful for you in helping making meaning with links? Yes, yes, it was. Uh, I just wish we could go. Uh, it, it's like, yeah, it was like an appetizer, you know. I just, I think we've, we need to go full. Much, there's much more to it than what we. Well, went with to. Michael, like, you but, think you've gotten on a train, but actually, you've gotten on a plane, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so it, it doesn't just go back and forth. You you go in some different axes. Yes, yeah. part of the ride. <laughs> Yeah. Also, Fidel, there's an aspect of Tinderbox here is that, and because it's sort of one of those applications that you can do so much from, from ground level and you can just basically stay on the ground. It's like remote controlling an airplane. Um, mm. it sort of when you raise a question, uh, there's not only one answer, but there's multiple ways to do that. And then also looking at the ways to do that, uh, um, the, the path you choose might vary depending on what the second or the third or the tertiary uh, thing you're trying mm -hmm. to achieve is mm -hmm. so really mm -hmm. it's a tool that forces you to study exactly your 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 path as well as your direction you're taking and the map you have laid out in front of you um and that's why it is going to be like this for the next you know several months to a year mm -hmm. just being yeah. part of the tinderbox community because it exactly is this and, and so yeah. by the way too i did get into my my learning management system so here here i'm into my lms You'll see over here, I'll grab this. And because of Mac OS um, security, I'll show you in just a minute. So I'm going to grab the HTML from this. I'll go into the LMS, lets me paste in HTML, and I go like that. 
and then switch over and there is now the the announcement the abstract or anything like that so this is just demonstrating to you that you can literally just copy and paste the export out of html and the reason why the pictures aren't showing up is the security protocols of the mac it doesn't let third-party browser apps like just dig into uh dig into pass on your computer so then you would just copy and paste over the um the images cool yeah, really, really, really super powerful. And so you can kind of go from, and again, to this point of incremental formalization, and, I'll, and let me end on this one note, just to, so people can see it, um, to the form of incre incremental formalization, we showed you with this stamp, a very easy way to create notes. Um, I have been, you know, for about two and a half years, refining this process. Um, so I actually have a very much different way of pulling in different values and parameters. And so then when I'm creating my notes and I'm in here, I can actually be uh, customizing Tinderbox to have it passed to my create function, what attributes for this particular attribute of that particular note, which values I want it to be passing through. Do I want this, when I'm linking to this note, do I want it to be direction to or direction from? Which folder do I want that the values of that attribute going to? Which prototype do I want applied? What link name do I want it to be given? All of that's being passed for each individual note based on its prototypes, based on the value of that attribute. So you can really get very in depth into, into where this could end up going. And that's incremental formalization. You'll figure out what will work for you as you're evolving your process. I think it's incredible. You said you were going to run over six minutes. And by my estimation, we're at exactly six minutes. <laughs> Actually, sorry, I ran over 23. So my no, apologies. no, no. This is six minutes in Michael time. Six oh, minutes to the nose. Yeah, yeah. So uh, again, we've got, it, we've got it recorded. We'll share some of the demo files we went through today. And um, I hope this was uh, a value to you, to you all. It is. I awesome. hope we revisit some of these because... You you go just a little bit quickly for people like me, um, but, uh, you know. Uh, well, I go a little bit quickly for everyone. And again, I just wanted to get the complete lesson done. And to, 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 to Fidel's point, we've got to we've got to go back over it. Yeah, well, I, ho I hope we have a chance because there were some really interesting concepts here. Thank you. Well, it's up to us. We can, you know, it's our meeting, so we can do it. I'm not going to be around next weekend, but we can do it anytime we want. Thanks, Michael. That's good. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, thanks, it's a bit Michael. like a fire pose. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so it's much. It's like drinking from a fire hose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come to stay dry. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Have a All right, everybody. Thanks. We'll see you. Take care. All right. All right. Take care. Safe Thanks. travels. Bye. Bye.